Today what we're going to talk about is sport and politics. And sport and politics is kind of a bridge between um, the previous section on sport and governance because obviously political systems are going to affect the way that sport um, is governed. But it's also a bridge to the marketplace because uh, political systems are certainly going to influence the way um, that sport organizations are able to market their products. So today we're going to get into a little bit of the political uses of sport and kind of give you an overview of, of that. And then to talk about how globalization has affected the way that politics are used in sport. All right, when we talk about uh, sport and politics, we, we need to start out with a definition and, and, and of course understand that politics are, are certainly an essential component of the sport, uh, the global sport marketplace. So like I said earlier, um, you're going to see governments influence sport. Sport's going to be used to influence government. You, you just can't escape it. It's inescapable that the two are going to be linked. What we're talking about when we're talking about politics is the use of power to make decisions and allocate resources. So people that have power get to influence decisions and get to make decisions. And those decisions are often about resources, whether it's a salary, whether it's a facility, whether where the Olympic Games or the World Cup are going to be played. All those are resources that people in power get to make decisions about. And so sport is going to be certainly used in that decision-making process. And you can see here uh, on the screen, there are three ways that sport plays a role in politics. The first thing that happens is that sport organizations um, like FIFA, like the International Olympic Committee, or like the Premier League, they're all organizations that are going to have politics within them. Uh, let's just take the Premier League. Liverpool and Manchester United are going to play politics with each other over particular players, the same way that teams in the NFL or the NBA would play politics with different players. Um, similarly, sport organizations are going to play politics on the, in, the, in the broader environment, so with other governments, with other leagues. Um, the NBA is going to be trying to get a foothold in China, while the NFL is going to be also maybe trying to get a foothold um, maybe in China, but probably more likely in the United Kingdom and Europe. So sport organizations are going to play politics with each other. And then the other thing that happens, and this is uh, that where you got to kind of be aware as a sport manager, is that sport organizations get used as political tools. And sport organizations are really good political tools for these three reasons that you see here. First off, they get seen all the time. They're on TV. Uh, they're on TV around the globe. So anytime um, that sport is on television, people, uh, leaders have a potential to use sport to make a political statement about what um, what they want. The second thing is that they're extremely popular. So if um, leaders make political decisions that are consistent with a particular team or a particular sport, it can, it can win them popularity. So the popularity of sport, the fact that it attracts a lot of viewers, is a power, makes it a powerful political tool. And then the second, or the, excuse me, the third and the last thing is that uh, sport has tremendous links to identity. We, we had another lecture, we will have another lecture that talks about the role of identity um, among fans. And so those identities, politicians will play on that or, or sport organizations will play on that to get things um, the way they want, whether it's for their nation or for their team or for their, um, in, some, in the United States, for their university. Okay, sport is used um, in five different ways, and, and I'm going to try to give you an example of each one of these here. So the first is that sport is used as propaganda, and, and there's obviously a long definition there, but essentially what propaganda is, is you're trying to tell the world that what you stand for is really, really good. Um, and so you're trying to promote um, democracy, or you're trying to promote that your, your economic system, but capitalism is the way, or communism, communism is the way. And sport success says that whatever you're doing is a good thing. So when you do well in the Olympics or when you win the World Cup or you place high in the World Cup, it tells the, the entire world that whatever your nation is doing from a government, cultural, political, economic standpoint is a good thing. So we use it as a message to the rest of the world uh, as a, in terms of propaganda. The second thing that we do with politics is we use politics more locally to create pride in our country. So we create nationalism. We want people to be proud of being Americans or whatever country they're from. And, um, and we do this through a lot of um, symbolism. So we obviously we, we put the flag up there. We play the national anthem if you win a gold medal. We, um, you know, sometimes at games we'll do flyovers or we have the military come out. And we really want people to feel good about um, uh, about their nation and, and sport success is a great way to make people feel great about their nation and we see this obviously in, in a lot of events like the olympics uh, and the world cup okay sport is an opiate of the masses opiate obviously is a drug and what we do with sport sometimes is that we use it to distract us from the real problems that's one of the things i'm giving, doing this lecture right now with the covid19 uh, virus 
lockdown or the quarantine. And one of the things I would love for us to have is just something to watch. Like I could just watch sport. It would take my mind off the, off the problems that, that are occurring here. And this happens sometimes um, in countries that are poor is that some of the poorest countries have the best teams because people go, well, I can't do anything about my economic situation. So I'm going to support my sports team and I'm going to play soccer. Or I'm going to play basketball and be great at that particular sport. So it allows citizens to forget the harsh conditions of their lives and focus on something positive, which in some cases is sport. Okay, politicians are really savvy about this, and so they will exploit sport to help them in a lot of different ways. Um, in extreme cases, athletes will use fame to help themselves get elected, but more commonly you'll see athletes, um, like at, at the beginning you, you saw there Obama, like a lot of NBA players came out to support him and help him get elected. There are certainly athletes that support Donald Trump and, and have gone out and donated money or help him get elected. Politicians will also use sporting events um, or issues to link themselves to dominant values. And this is this is one where you'll see like at the Army-Navy game, Donald Trump will go and to make it, it seem like he's affiliated with the military or supportive of the military. Or another one that Trump got himself involved in, smartly or not, was um, the, the whole notion of Kaepernick taking a knee and whether that was patriotic or not patriotic. So that's an example of sport being used by a politician to make a broader statement about something that he or she wants uh, in their particular country. All right, the last political use of sport is sport as a means for social change. And you see this in the Olympics all the time. Is Because of the great visibility of sport and the popularity of sport and, the, and people's nationalism around the Olympics, we use sport to attract attention to a social change mechanism. The first thing that we can do, as happened in 1980 and 84, is you saw countries boycott the Olympics to make political statements. And Russia and the United States both did boycotts, and neither one really amounted to much of anything. The other thing you'll see is displays. In 1968, uh, John Carlos and Tommy Smith made a display where they had the Black Power Fist, and they stood up on the podium to uh, fight the oppression of African Americans in the United States. Uh, in the 1972 Olympics, we saw attacks. So um, uh, the Palestinian, Li Palestinian Liberation Army um, hijacked or, or took hostage, excuse me, uh, some Jewish athletes out of Olympic Village in, in Munich and ended up killing them all in hopes to uh, gain more territory uh, from Israel, which was uh, ultimately not successful. Probably the easiest way to get people to change their opinion of a country or to get people to come on your side is to be good at something. Um, so success in the form of winning gold medals or winning medals is probably the best means for social change because people understand that what you're doing is successful and so they begin to see things your way as opposed to something that is more violent or overtly political in nature. Okay, so we see those uses all the time. What's changed a little bit, uh, maybe in, in the recent globalization efforts, is the way that sport and politics interact. So the first thing that's happened is that because globalization is so much easier now, so much easier for, for um, athletes to move around the country, is that um, it's blurred national allegiances. I think one of the things you see in the United States is you'll see... Um, um, athletes, soccer players particularly who are of Mexican-American descent who rather than playing for the United States they decided to try and go back and play uh, soccer for the Mexican national team or even I've had students who were 100% born in America and yet uh, if America and Mexico are playing soccer will root for the Mexican national team because it's so much easier for them to follow the Mexican national team than the American national team and that would be true of citizens from across the globe you want to watch um, um, you know I had a former colleague that loved to watch um, cricket matches between Australia and England and could do so easily from our house here in Stockton. And so globalization has made has allowed you to be to be um, to maintain your national allegiance even if you move. And it's obviously obviously made it easier for for athletes to move to other nations in pursuit of Olympic or professional opportunities. Um, the second big uh, thing we need to realize about globalization is that transnational corporations like Nike or Gatorade or Adidas have power that exerts. Uh, that they can that they can exert over nation states in really really broad fashion and so um, if FIFA wants to uh, again tell a nation like Qatar that they have to serve beer at uh, the World Cup the nations will cave in and so FIFA in its in in one sense has almost nation state or even super nation state power. Uh, because of the popularity of sport. So whether it's a, a governing body or a transnational corporation, they really, really have a lot of power because of globalization uh, and sport. 
And then the final thing is that we've seen in, in maybe since 2000, nations that want to make a statement on a world stage are using sport for political purposes. And you can see the three examples there at the bottom. South Africa in 2010 hosted the World Cup as a way of uh, establishing Africa as an economic power in the world. Uh, China did that in 2008 with the Olympics, and Kenya is going to continue to do so, and, and maybe is the most successful example of using sport to emerge politically. Brazil tried to uh, with the World Cup in 2016, uh, 2014 and the Olympics in 2016. Uh, didn't go so well for them uh, because their economy sort of fell apart. But again, that's one of those where globalization, because it's uh, so popular and there's so much media for it and there's so much attention to it, countries have been using that effectively to make statements about what kinds of nations they are. So again, that's a little bit of a bridge between the marketplace um, and the governance structure. And I know um, it's not covered as much in the reading, so I wanted to give you sort of some background on that. And that will be on your test. So thanks for your attention, and we'll talk to you later.